This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering globally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 tells us what the gospel is. Thank God. Amen. How that Jesus died by our sins, according to the scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are used, them that are bruised, used and bruised. Glory. That's what's happened to a bunch of you. You've been used by the devil. Thank God. Wow. Amen. I'm not a sh- sh- Amen. The word is neither even in my heart, in my mouth, is the word of faith which I preach. You'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God and raise him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believeth to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. There is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just to live by his faith. Amen. I want to welcome all of you to this broadcast throughout the world. Amen. On earth, of course. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Receiving it on live stream, Roku, and other devices. Welcome. And with me, Paul Peters, co-host on the set. Good morning. Good morning. You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready, too. Amen. But first... We're going to have the My Girls do a great song, if I can remember, because there's a great opposition to what I'm doing. So I'm going to let them tell you what they're singing. Thank you.
my girls. You're the God, a healer. Thank God. Are you, Paul? I'm doing well. Amen. You know, in 1990, maybe before, but study for Sarah, uh, became director of Water Bright Ministries. Zimbabwe. We opened an office at Masasa House and was there about four years. We ministered with money and other things at an orphanage in in Arari. And Steady was in charge of all that. We gave away thousands of tapes in albums. And I don't know how many books we gave away, but a bunch of free jars. And Steady, I believe we were there four years in offices. Uh, then we withdrew it because God had some other things for me to do in 94. Or, well, 94, we started traveling. In 95, we traveled some. 96, we really started traveling by corporate jet in July. Um, in several areas of America, California, Indiana, so forth. The steady went through some trying days. He still is. He's a, a servant of mine. He serves with me, a, an apostle. And, you know, we got a spirit in Missouri that's got a big mouth. And I was told that he took, he confronted that spirit. Thank God, got an apostle helping me. Not yes men or yes women. Amen. I heard a kind of a dumb, of a dumb saying, but the, the religious church uh, is dumb, real dumb. So they'll probably pick up on this. Uh, it went something like this about how do you do? Because that's a melon. I think they changed it to how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do this? How do you do that? That was a female talking to the male. Oh boy, I got a lot of applause. Thank God. Steady has joined me, standing up against this wicked spirit. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, there was a time that my daughter would just walk in unity with me, agree with me, and it was beautiful. Over the years, Someone evilly affected her, and they will bear their burden. Thank God, 2004, I moved from Fairview to Plato House. Gave my property away in Fairview on one and a quarter acres on Highway 5, four bedroom, three bath, 2,400 square feet. I lived there since 77. And it came to play the direction of God. And lived in Chase Oak's apartment for almost five months. I guess I did. Uh, and uh, glory, but moved 
to where I'm at today in December. December the 8th. And the war was great. I'd been ministering in Plano since 1980, but I'd leave at night and sleep outside. Minister here a lot of nights, but go home and sleep in Bearview. Well, when I came here, uh, there was trouble, trouble, big trouble. Came down on me like I never would have thought of. In 05, it was really tough, hard. Bored and by more than I would have guessed that I could have endured. Now it's worse. Amen. Because if I'm dealing with one accord and hearts don't want to be in one accord, they want to be their own thing, do their own thing. No, we serve God. One heart and one soul. Amen. But in five, uh, I have a room in my house, and it's upstairs, and it's an entertainment room, and that's what we call it. And let me tell you what the enter entertainment is, prayer. All right? And that's the entertainment, prayer. I pray in hours every day. Every day. But in 05, I was praying, sitting on a couch, and that I think that may have been, well, anyway, a couch that God told me to buy and put on the east wall. And I sat on that couch at, at night, get up midnight, one, two, Three, praying, and uh, and I I got into a tremendous war in October, a great war. I had two really tough mornings, two or three somewhere in the morning, fight for everything that I had. I could hardly get my breath. And it took me 45 minutes praying before I could get my faith above the attack of the devil on my spirit. And, but I overcome in about 45 minutes. And then Satan's kingdom was in trouble because I've been praying since 1970 and interceding for America. So I do have a lot of experience fighting Satan's kingdom. And so God, I was sitting there on that couch and had my feet upon it, leaning back against the arm, praying, and I had a wall there, the east wall, in that room, the Lord said, put longhorns on that wall. Longhorns? I know God's voice. And I knew it had to be a, a painting because God knows. Although I was a veterinarian and I have real admiration for Western things. I was not a cowboy. And I treated every kind, every breed of horse. Uh, and some of my, well, some of my top clients were cutting horse people. Boots, belt, big hat, 
spurs. And I worked for some of the top ones. Uh, thank God. There were about 40 of them in America that were considered the top. And uh, on a fairly regular basis, I worked for three, three to five of them. And other times more. And bulldogging horses, roping horses, all cowboys. I wore jodhapurs, and I wore khaki. Uh, actually, they were western trousers. You can't even find them anymore than I know of. And that had pearl buttons on them, and a short sleeve. Blue shirt, uh, thank God. And for a couple of years, I wore a tie with it. What do they call it? Broadcloth, I think. Anyway, and no hat. Never wore a hat. Didn't want one. Didn't like them. Did they have time? Mess with a hat. Uh, a lot of cowboys spend too much time chasing their hats. But that was my style. And they all accepted me. Some would tell me, Doc, if you get some boots, it'd make things a little better. I'd say, yes. Yeah. Does that help my expertise on your horse? No. So we never got in a dispute over our clothing. But they were great friends of mine. And Quarter horses, thoroughbreds, Arabians, saddlebreds, walking horses. Uh, I'm sure there are others. I know there are, but I can't remember what they call those things. Uh, I can, but uh, I don't think I can say it right, so I'm not going to do it. Anyway, uh, in October 05, God told me to get put longhorns on that wall. So I came to the church and I said, Candace, look on the internet and see if you can find uh, a, a painting uh, of longhorns. And immediately she found Roger, Roger Iker's site, Fort Worth, and went right straight to one of his best and called the strays. I said, that's it. Oh, by smite the shepherd, scatter the sheep, and shepherd Jesus in me, and I was smitten, and he was, and the sheep were scattered, beginning at old more. Oh, they, they were smitten before that. They went, Back in the 90s, they started going wild. And God told me, put that, that painting of Rikers up. So I got that one, found it, it was out here in Southport on a display on a particular weekend in October. Uh, and I got it put it up, and I got it a couple more. And Roger bought, I think going home to Texas, I bought a print of that, and uh, he delivered it to me here at Water of Life. He said, I really respect you guys. I wanted to be a preacher, but God wouldn't let me. I said, look, you're doing what God wanted you to do, do nice paintings for me and others. Amen. So, I think now we should have the strays on the screen. Is that right? Yes. It's up there right now. It's up there? Yes. Now, tell me, Paul, uh, how, how many uh, longhorns are there? Four? There's four of them, yes. Four of them. And uh, one of them got their head down, right, and just going on, going home, right? 
There's there's two of them that are kind of in the front that have their head down there. Oh yeah. Yeah. But there's one. Ooh. Is that right? Yeah, he's kind of off to the left. He has his head up, and he looks like he's kind of run away from the pack a little bit. Yeah, that's a female. Okay. Yeah. I said, oh, this is perfect. There's people that have strayed away from my ministry. All like sheep have gone astray. What? What is that? Doing, going their own way? Yes, at least so. Yeah. Guess what? If they went astray once, they had to be with God, right? Yeah, they turned everyone to his own way. Yeah. Did that, did that, uh, that fit me? All the strays I had, all them going wild, and I thought, huh, this is God. Rounding up the strays. And they don't like it. So I've got that in my house, and I'm going to get that and put it in my office if my decorator agrees. I want you to know how, when you come to my office, I want you to know how you once acted. Well, it doesn't hurt to remind you now and then where you came from, does it? It does you. Doesn't bother me. You see, I left behind. Yeah. Everything I could, and I still am. Pressing toward that high mark in Christ Jesus. Amen. So anyway, Y'all getting a good view of that? Is that still up? Not right now, but it was up for quite a while. Well, let's put it back up. Okay. I want y'all to see how you act. It's back up there now. Look at that one with her head up. We used to have a man that went to church here. That's why he, anytime the camera was on him, Thank God. You think I ought to be nice, Paul, and move on? <laughs> Glory. Well, yesterday I posted uh, Romans 4, some scripture. Genesis 18, uh, John 6. I think 63. Uh, what was that last? Hallelujah. You posted uh, Luke 8 about the parable of the sower. Oh, that was it. No, there's more than that. Yeah, there, there's more, but that, that was another one of them. Amen. Can you Luke, remember? Luke 21, 10. 21. Oh, Jeremiah 23. Yes, God used that word on me in Argyle in the 70s. And there he taught me that apostles and prophets, words spoken, uh, God's words spoken by apostles and prophets, they were like a fire and a hammer. And you don't like that, do you? You want Smooth things. Tell me how sweet I am. How great I am. Well, God doesn't lie. God knows that there's not one good thing in any of us. Not one good thing in any of us that was difficult to accept. I don't care if you haven't committed adultery, there's still not one good thing in you. Hallelujah. Thank God. So, when I speak, my words are like a fire and like a hammer, and they hurt, and they really provoke the devil. 
The devil says, let us alone. Let us alone. Watch, I received an email from T-Town. That's Tulsa. From a woman. And she said, now you have taught us, preached the gospel to us. And preached it. Uh, but you don't preach it in love. So we're going to preach it in love. Well, you know what? 2 John 6 says, this is love that you keep by commandment. And you know what Jeremiah says? God said to Jeremiah, he said, you go and you speak every word that I command you to speak to kings, uh, princes, priests, rulers, and if you don't speak every word I command you to, to speak, I will confound you before them all. I'll break you to pieces before every one of them. Well, uh, <laughs> I decided I didn't want to be Humpty Dumpty. and be broken to pieces by God in front of a bunch of you rebels. So God opposed me, and I speak his words, and they're like a fire and a hammer, and my friends, you're going to get them. Better that you get them than I be broken into pieces. Paul, are you ready to minister? I was gonna, in Hebrews 12, chapter 4, it says, The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's God. Amen. That sees an apostle, and he's just beginning to blow with me. And God, I didn't even blow that. But God said, well, you don't need to. I got your co-host. But did you ever think of that one? Quick and sharper than a two-edged sword? Goodness. Have you ever had a two-edged sword touch you? And you know what it does? It divides the soul and the spirit. Did it say that? Yes. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. There you go. Thank you. The soul, well, intellect and emotion, spirit in the, in the belly, and the soul is intellect, will, from there to there, and emotion in the belly. Oh, that's where the solar plexus is at. Thank God. And believe me, that's a sensitive area. Oh, that's where Dr. Feelgood operates, right? In the emotion. Can you see with oh, this sweet? Oh, goodness sakes, how great this feels. Don't mess with it, Doyle. Well, I do. Because. First Peter 2, uh, First Peter 1, 22 says we must purify your emotions by obeying the Spirit, the, the Word through the Spirit. In Acts 26, my ministry says, open their eyes. Turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, receiving forgiveness of their sins. Thank God. And receive that they receive their inheritance among the sanctified uh, ones with the faith of God that's in uh, this apostle's heart. That's what I do. And the sanctification hurts because your flesh 
doesn't like to give up, give up its lust and its fun. Nor does your unsanctified heart like to give up its lust, the sequelers of riches or cares. Hallelujah. Now, I bet you can minister. Yes. You just did. Paul Peters is coming to do a great song that has been actually the track has been made by David Brown, I believe, produced it. I don't want to, but I'm pretty sure he did. David Thank you. Thank God. Amen. Paul Peters, Jesus paid it all. Amen. Savior said, Thy strength in me is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Lord, now in thee I Sixth 
of July is becoming a part-time worker, member of my staff. That's been one big fight. There's a spirit that opposes that with everything, and it's a powerful spirit. Well, Psalm 89 says that God will beat down the foes of Jesus that he's laid help upon for the body of Christ. And Jesus in me, uh, God, through my prayers, will beat that spirit down that opposes David Brown with this ministry. No, it'll be through my prayers. And Enjoy your meeting, because you're going to get it. Thank God that Del Wahape tries to run this ministry and has ever since it started. Can't happen. I don't know what I'm doing. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, by the way, David will be working uh, part-time as a producer and with, with music, primarily. Actually, he's also a member of the quartet already, right? Right. Has been, what, a couple years? Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah, somewhere years, yeah. Yeah, and the brothers. Right. One of them. Yeah. Thank God. Oh, if you really, I I can't see it. Wow. This devil hates my talking about this. I'm told that it's really a thing of beauty to see uh, Paul and David on camera and with the song, I Shall Not Be Moved. Y'all kind of become the focal point. For, yeah, we have like a, a, huh? a counter melody kind of thing on top of the other 14. A counter saying, melody? Right. Oh, Say I need help all the time. A counter melody. I'll try not to forget that one. Well, that's great. Well, they tell me they really look good on camera. You know what? God did that. I didn't have a thing to do with it. No, God did it. And these young men's heart. Hearts to them, I know. All right. The gospel has been preached. It has been preached, and we're going to talk about it. But first, Terry Brown is going to come, and she's going to minister one day at a time. One of my favorites from 1974, Terry Brown, she's here, I know. I'm only human I'm just a woman Help me believe in what I can be And all that I am Show me the stairway Yesterday's gone, sweet. 
you will have arrived. I didn't say all your sins will be purged or cleansed. I said it'll take care of everything to start you on your way to heaven and meet Jesus in the air. Thank God. So, the name of Jesus, no other name under heaven whereby one might be saved, mix faith with it, and believe that you'll be saved, born again, join one spirit with the Lord. Say the name after me, Jesus, Jesus. God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.